name is Charlie Dune O'Reilly. Uh, my pronouns are they, them, or fey fair, and I identify as non-binary. My name is Alexis. Um, my pronouns are she, her, um, and I identify as a transgender woman. My name is Max Shanahan. I use he or they, um, and I'm a trans masculine guy, I suppose. It was always kind of uneasy for me. Um, like I liked pink and I liked girly stuff a lot and um, it was always a big girly girl, you know. I was born into the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, so Mormon. Um, I have some experiences early on in life that make sense now, I guess. It was an interesting time. I, yeah, when I was super small, like below three or four, I, I knew it made sense in my head. I went to a wedding and I asked, can I be one of the flower girls? And um, I was obviously told no, and I didn't understand why. Then I realized that it, in fact, is not what I was supposed to be. So I repressed it and put it way down into my subconscious. I didn't really learn how to get back to that until I was like 15 or 16. Like I was a tomboy um, and I thought I was happy being a girl so long as I could be a tomboy but it was always it was always the pink elephant in the room. I think I was maybe 16 when I started um, when I like let myself think about my gender identity. I had uh, originally come out as queer when I was 14 and um, then I thought that's all that's all I'm allowed to claim I'm not allowed to be trans I'm not even allowed to think about it because I have that privilege of being a girl who's queer. The sexuality thing made more sense to me because I understood that a bit more but the transgender stuff I, I didn't even sorry to think that I was trans for until maybe September. I like let myself think about gender identity for maybe half an hour <laughs> and then I was like oh yeah no I'm definitely not cis. <laughs> so it, like it was always there in the background and everyone was kind of aware of it but no one was really gonna say it. It kind of stopped being socially acceptable for me to be a tomboy and then I kind of had to force myself to acknowledge what was really going on in the background. Growing up in the church um already into segregating you once I got to teenage levels as young men and young women. Kind of trying to figure out how I wanted to present myself was going to be different because instead of just being you know having the bisexual haircut and uh, cuffing my jeans sometimes and stuff like that I had to figure out how I wanted the world to see me as non-binary. So I grew up as a young man they'd be like oh you need to do this to be um, a worthy young man and you go in through the ropes of the priesthood and the different levels of that. That's what you'd be taught and that's what I grew up experiencing. When I first realized that I that I was non-binary, that I wanted to be more androgynous, um, and that's not the same case now, but uh, that was my like initial concern. I was like, how do I look almost like a boy, but not quite? I was quite lucky. Um, I was surrounded by a very supportive family in particular. Um, they're all like proper third wave feminists uh, and raised me to be the same. So I came out to one person when I was 16 as non-binary, um, as gender fluid actually, um, and that was it for another two years. And then I didn't talk to anybody about it except for my friend Jordan and except for um, my friend Curry who was the first person I came out to in real life. While I had to, I had to reach a point where I I could come out to myself and feel safe in coming out to them then. I didn't really have to worry so much about the reaction when I did come out. Uh, it was more about when I'd be ready to do it. I only came out to my family properly, my entire family, my mom, my dad, my sister, my sibling, um, November. November just gone. I came out in school um, halfway through sixth year um, because we stopped doing PE. So I didn't really have to worry about changing rooms and stuff anymore. And I thought it was, I, you know, I wanted to make it official. I kind of wanted it all out of the way before I went to college and stuff. So I wouldn't be trying to do an alter ego kind of thing between people who knew me before and people who know me now. Uh, I came out to my dad over dinner at the key co-op. And <laughs> it was because I accidentally called myself CJ in front of him instead of my dead name. And I was like, wait, no, pause the whole story. I can't keep telling this story until I, you know, I come out to him. And uh, I cried in the middle of Kiko off. Once I did come out, 
publicly my parents didn't really like it so I kind of never spoke about my sexuality with them again and generally it was positive um, there's always not nice people but I was I was quite fortunate in the people who were important to me <laughs> my friend who works in there came over with uh, tissues and was like I hope you're okay and I was like yeah no I'm really great actually I'm doing really good better than I have uh, for years I think the number one slur that I am most familiar with and that has been used against me the most and the one that I have like most definitely reclaimed, like staked my claim on, is dyke. I went to an all-girls school at secondary school and I came out as bi, um, which isn't all everybody is now, but I came out as bi when I was 14, so in second year. Um, and that was four years of people being like, I don't want to change in the same PE changing room as them because they're dyke. Well, with me, I think it's more people thinking that I'm gay, like in secondary school and stuff. I'd be called faggot and stuff. I haven't as such been called a lot of trans related slurs because I don't openly look like I'm trans, I just look like a very feminine woman. People would also say, well, even when I tried to be more myself, even still before I came out as trans, um, people being like, why are you so excessively gay? I from like within the LGBT community, if I've ever called myself a tranny, um, people who are cis usually get really, really put off by it. They're like, you can't say that, that's not your word to say, why are you saying that, that's so like abrasive and stuff. And I'm like, well, first of all, you're cis. Uh, second of all, that's mine to reclaim. Hopefully people are really interacted with the time where um, people I met online through Facebook page and stuff. And that's the reason why it came out at the time. I felt comfortable with the idea of it because if they were comfortable and started to realize there's nothing wrong with this. I can be who I want to be. Nowadays, um, most of my LGBT friends are in person now, which is it is much better. You know, you interact with people, you socialize in person. But also online, I like to follow lots of artists. Quite a few of them are LGBT as well. I follow a lot of artists on Twitter and Instagram as well, um, specifically like queer or POC artists. That's why I think gays really like the arts because it's a way to express yourself. Whether you write, whether you draw, whether you paint, whether whatever you do, you're expressing yourself and you can express who you are through that medium. They just give me like a lot of the inspiration to like dress the way I dress and uh, do my makeup the way I do and um, a lot of the time act the way that I act. It can be kind of nasty though online because uh, I've met more TERFs online than I have uh, in real life. So like trans exclusive radical feminists who aren't really feminists at all because if you're uh, diminishing a woman down to her genitalia then you're a misogynist essentially. A lot of Twitter um, is really great but a lot of Twitter is also like I get like TERFs in my mentions a lot of the time being like, haha, stupid, snowflake, blah blah blah, stuff like that, which can really grate on you. People invalidating me, like terse and stuff, um, is the one reason that I'm like constantly checking my gender and constantly being like, am I actually non binary or am I just faking it? Uh, and it always turns out that I'm actually non binary because I am. Um, If you probably if you spent like more than twenty minutes in conversation with me, I've probably brought up Lachlan Watson before, um, who plays Susie Putnam on uh, a TV show on Netflix. Lachlan Watson is a non-binary seventeen or eighteen year old. I can't remember, and they're such a massive inspiration to me. It's real nice because I get to like look at them and be like, ah, just such a such a small little non-binary who's growing up in a world that's maybe slightly better than um, the one that I was growing up in. So I know a few of you guys watch One Day at a Time, um, and Sid from One Day at a Time is non-binary, is dating Elena who's a lesbian, which is the exact type of representation I want to see as a non-binary lesbian. It's so like family oriented and it's so like easily understandable. 
just so easily implemented as well. I feel like the storyline isn't forced whatsoever, which it can often be when it comes to non-binary people. It warms my heart so much um, and the fact that it's getting cancelled is so gross. It's so nasty. American Horror Story um, Hotel. She was the first interaction I ever had for transgender people and she was a trans woman as well. I thought, this is amazing. One thing that really stuck with me is that when she gets together with um, one of, a later character who's a guy, she tells him one night that it's not gay for you to be with me. And, and he's fine with that, and, but it was it, it resonated with me. It's like, that makes sense. I knew I liked men at the time, but I didn't see why it had to be this whole big thing that I was gay. For me, women, like women was more exotic. It's exotic. Like you would just, that was more different to me. I may have come out as bisexual in secondary school, but I feel more comfortable. I came more in terms of being pansexual this year and uh, my first real interaction with that was um, the show called Shit's Creek and that was my first interaction with the word itself even and I was like this makes sense like the, the explanation of it as well made a lot more sense to me just liking people especially since I started to to notice the more non-conforming side of gender like I, I liked the bi because it was everything but it was still that very binary definition in a way. I would say in the darkest sentiment, um, the Irish trans healthcare system is shite. Unless the system changes, we're not going to have a way around that. It's different for everyone. A, a major thing I've learned from being trans and everything I've I've had to do because of it to be who I am is to learn how just how different experience is for everyone and how different experience can be for you. Which just means that we need to push more. There's people who are advocating for the better inclusion and the better treatment of trans people in the healthcare system um, and there's more people adding to that movement every single day. Like a lot of people spend their whole lives afraid to stop doing the job they hate or to, to pick up, you know, yoga because they think it'll be cool or, you know, to, to join that sports team even though, you know, they don't think they'd be that great. A lot of people spend so much of their lives trapped in boxes that they don't want to be in. And I think it's real important to remember that the roots of trans people lies in revolution. Pride isn't a party. Uh, pride is a right. And every day that a trans person is living and existing and breathing, they're rebelling. It resonates with me a lot because that's that's what I'm doing. I'm rebelling against everything I've known my entire life. I w I've walked away from everything that I thought defined was who I was to figure out what I really defines who I am. Your whole life, it's yours. If you want, if you want to change your gender, you can do that. Or you've got a different passion that you just realized, or you've held inside you for so long. You're allowed to do that. And to just live your life like that is more than anyone could ever ask for. You shouldn't be held from the things that matter to you most because of other people and what society is going to say about you. You shouldn't feel trapped in your own life uh, and in your own skin. There are people who, are, who understand you. Um, and there are people who, like you, are rebelling and revolting every single day of their lives. And you just have to find them. Mm -hmm.